I have another low carb meal idea for the family coming at you. This time, a low carb beef dinner recipe in the form of beef stew. This healthy meal idea for the family is so easy to make in the Instant Pot and is a perfect example of what to eat for balanced blood sugar. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so here we go with the beef stew. First, I'm gonna wash some celery and carrots. I'm using one bunch of celery here, which turned out to be about seven stalks and 10 carrots. I used a lot of carrots because they were so thin, but feel free to use as much or as little as you prefer. And just FYI, I'll be making a double batch of beef stew so that I can freeze leftovers and eat it at another time. So my ingredient portions are all doubled. One serving will serve about three people, so double it like me if you want more. Now I'm just going to chop them up into nice bite-sized chunks. Since we're using an Instant Pot for this recipe, you want at least the carrots to be pretty sizable so they don't disintegrate into the stew. Now, as usual, I'm going to be using a ton of garlic. Garlic has so many health benefits. Some research shows that it may reduce cholesterol and lower high blood pressure. And more fascinating to me is that it may reduce fasting blood sugar and A1C if incorporated regularly into your diet. What a dream food, and it makes everything just taste so much better. Now I have one Yukon gold potato. You can use another type of potato if that's what you have on hand, but gold potatoes just seem to hold together a bit better in high heats. Or if you want to do super low carb, you can just leave it out altogether. But it does create a thicker, more stew-like texture. And the meat and veggies will be enough to balance out the carbs in the potato for blood sugar. And lastly, I'm gonna chop up half an onion. I'll be putting aside half to make chili later this week. And if you haven't checked out my chili recipe, I'll link it above and below in the description box. It's super, super easy and really delicious and a great way to add in extra veggies into your diet. Now let's go ahead and brown the stew meat. I got this meat from ButcherBox. It's grass-fed and finished beef, so it's supposed to be better for you nutritionally, but it is by no means a requirement for healthy, nourishing food. You can just use conventional beef like chuck meat and it'll taste just as good. Browning the meat is my least favorite part of making stew because I'm really impatient and I don't like to have to sit here and babysit the meat to flip it. You can technically skip this step, but I promise you'll be compromising on taste pretty significantly. So if you can, brown the meat, and if I can do it, you can do it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. A slight browning is good enough. Now once that's done, I'm just setting the meat aside in a different bowl, and now I'm gonna throw in my onions and garlic. And um, I shouldn't have put all the veggies in one bowl because now I'm standing here picking things out. I put everything together so that I'd have one less dish to wash later, but the time it's taking for me to pick all of the onions and garlic out, this is not efficient. Now give that a stir for a few minutes until the onions start to get translucent. Now I'm going to throw in the rest of my veggies and start mixing it up. Next, I'm going to throw in two cups of chicken broth and one cup of tomato sauce. Rao's is my favorite. It has no added sugar and it has a really nice, robust tomato-y flavor. Now dump the meat and all the delicious juices back into your Instant Pot and if you can, scrape off the brown bits on the bottom of the pot with your tongs now that you have some liquid in there to really get the flavors into your stew. I'm throwing in a few shakes of dried rosemary as well, like two teaspoons or so, and also two bay leaves. Now I'm setting my Instant Pot to pressure cook for 15 minutes, and then I'm going to let it naturally release for 10 minutes and then quick release the rest of the way. Mmm, doesn't that look good already? But I'm not done yet. For some color, let's throw in some frozen peas. And no need to cook the stew further at this point. The peas will just naturally cook in the heat of the stew. And that's it! An easy weeknight dinner that tastes like you spent hours. But no, of course not, because nobody has time for that. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming recipes. And I really hope you and your family give this beef stew a try.